So question five is all related to dynamics and we're told about a situation where we've got two particles that are moving over a pulley. Um, we can see from the weights that are given that the, or rather the masses that are given, that obviously the greater mass is on this side. So we can imagine that this is going to cause acceleration on the right hand side downwards and it's going to cause acceleration on the left hand side upwards. Um, we also need to remember that if the string is pulling downwards, or is being pulled downwards by this mass, there must also be a force that's pulling upwards in the string, which is going to be tension. And again, similarly on this side, there's going to be another force here, which is also going to be our tension. Now, for the first part of this question, we're asked to show that the tension in the string immediately after the particle is released is 12 over 5 mg. My preferred method for doing this is to think about the system not as a sort of up and down system but to try and flatten it out so thinking about sort of moving this bit round up here and moving this bit round up here so what we end up with is a flat system um, running across the top where I'm being pulled in this direction by 3 mg and I'm being pulled in this direction by 2 mg so that's exactly what I'm gonna set up underneath here so here was my first force, 3mg, force at this end is going to be 2mg. I also knew that I had tension involved in both parts of my system. Uh, I'm going to clearly label that this is going to be the direction of my acceleration and now I'm ready to start setting up some equations. So if I uh, resolve this system uh, using our sort of F equals M A situation then I think about all the forces that are acting towards the right hand side which is 3 M G and I'm going to also have tension from here um, immediately after that I'm going to subtract the other tension and then subtract the 2 M G that's going to be equal to the mass of the total system which is 2 plus 3 5 uh, lots of the mass multiplied by the acceleration now some people will ask whether we need to bother including the tensions and in reality because they both cancel each other out you're okay not to so what you end up with here with is mg is equal to 5ma the m's are going to cancel and I find out that my acceleration is g on 5 now obviously it's important to remember at this point that I wasn't actually asked to find the acceleration I was asked to find the tension but I do need that value in order to find tension in order to find tension I split the system and I just consider one part of the system and I'm just going to consider this side of my system. Um, what's that going to give me? Well if I resolve again I've got 3mg minus tension is equal to 3ma. Again force here is equal to my mass multiplied by acceleration. I know that the acceleration is g over 5 so this becomes 3mg over 5. Now it's just a case of <coughs> rearranging. So I have 3mg minus 3mg over 5 is equal to tension. Multiply up by 15, uh, sorry, up, up by 5 and get 15. So 15mg minus 3mg all over 5 is equal to tension, which is going to tell me, as we wanted to, that tension is. 12 fifths of mg. In the next part of my question we're thinking about a situation where the particle is then going to descend for 1.5 meters, B will strike the ground and is brought to rest in the subsequent motion A does not reach the pulley. Find the distance uh, travelled by A between the instant when B strikes the plane and the instant that the string becomes taut again. Okay so I'm just going to quickly set up a little diagram here to sort of think about what's happening uh, I know that my particle B has hit the ground and particle A is going to obviously have travelled up and then there's going to be sort of, it's going to have some velocity at that point. So particle A is going to carry on sort of travelling up and then it's going to travel back down again. And what we're interested in is what is this total distance travelled up and then down. So what I need to do is I need to work out how fast A is travelling at this point because when I know how fast A is travelling at that point I can then just solve a simple SUVAT equation 
to work out how far it has travelled. So, where should we start? Well, what do we know about this situation? We know, if we imagine from the start point, which was somewhere in the middle here, we know that the distance travelled by A is going to be 1.5 metres. We know that its initial speed was zero. Its final speed is actually what we're interested in. The acceleration was what we had in the first part of a question, which was g over 5, and time we're not interested in and don't need to know, so I'm just going to strike that out. So, using this information I need some sort of equation, and my equation that I'm going to use is uh, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Why am I using that one? Well, because it's the only equation that doesn't involve time. Now I can substitute in my values. I'm looking for v squared u squared is going to be 0, 2 times g over 5 times 1.5. Now I'm going to write 1.5 as 3 over 2, because I like to work in fractions. Uh, and also now my 2s are going to cancel out, and I'm left with v squared is equal to um, 3g over 5. So that tells me that v here is going to be equal to the square root of 3g on 5. Now I'm actually not going to calculate that as a value and you'll see why in just a moment. So I now know that the initial speed at this point is going to be square root of 3g on 5. So now I want to set up a new SUVAT problem to find out how far the particle has travelled. And in this problem um, I'm interested in finding out s. I know that the initial speed is the square root of 3g over 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to half this problem. I'm going to think, well, how far has it travelled to get to the top? And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I know that when it reaches its uh, highest point, its speed is going to be zero. Under these conditions, B is no longer acting on A, and A is moving freely under gravity. So my acceleration is going to be minus G. And again, T, I don't know or need to know. So again, this takes me to a situation where I am interested in uh, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And it's about to become apparent why I didn't bother calculating this as a value. Um, I know that the v squared is going to be 0. Now u squared becomes 3g over 5 square rooted squared. So that's why I didn't bother finding out an exact value here, because I knew long term I would need to square it again. Uh, multiplied by two lots of minus g times by s. That gives me 0 is equal to 3g over 5 minus 2g s. And rearranging this, it tells me that 2g s is equal to 3g over 5. So gravity is going to cancel, and s is going to be equal to 3 over 10. Now I need to be careful here because obviously I split my problem and I was thinking that this was just the distance to get to the top and I want to know the total distance travelled to when the string becomes taut again so I want that distance down the other side so I need to take this 3 over 10 and I need to multiply it by 2 to give me 6 over 10 or 3 over 5 or 0.6 metres as my final answer. Now for the final part of this question, I'm told some more information now, m is 0.5, I want to find the magnitude of the impulse on B due to the impact with the plane. Okay, the first thing that we need to be careful with here is actually, if I'm thinking about B, its mass is 3m, so I want to take in here, first of all, B is equal to 3m, which is going to be 3 lots of 0.5, which again is 1.5 kg, or we might want to write that as 3 over 2. Um, I'm looking to find the impulse on B, and if I'm talking about impulse on B, I'm interested in the change in momentum of B. So I want the final speed of B minus the initial speed of B, and we're talking about a situation where it's impact with the plane so I know that after impact the final speed of B is going to be zero and I know that the speed just before impact my initial speed is going to be the speed the system was moving at when B hit the plane which if we just go back to this question 
So the speed I was travelling at, uh, that A was travelling at here, will be the same as the speed that B was travelling at when it hit the plane. So I want to take my answer here um, for the first part of this question, which was the square root of 3g over 5. So that wants to go in here. Square root of 3g on 5 multiplied by my mass, which was 3 over 2, and that's going to give me impulse. Um, we're talking here about the magnitude of the impulse, so when this comes out to be minus 3 over 2 root 3g over 5, actually my final answer is going to be the, the positive version of that. Um, if I type that into my calculator, I am reliably informed that the answer is 21 root 3 over 10, or to give that in uh, to three significant figures, my answer is 3.64 newtons.